Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only Maxi here, and I am back for some more if yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Pac-Man World 3 for the Nintendo GameCube, PlayStation 2, Xbox, and Nintendo DS, the worst version of the game, and PSP. At least for I would call that anyway. So, yeah, last time we actually did manage to able to start the game off by able to explore him through the first world in the game, which is Bart, uh, Boneyard. And it's an alright world, despite the fact that it's not as, like, aesthetically pleasing compared to the forms of the pirate world from the likes of the original game and the grasslands from the sake of the forms of the second game. But... It knows what it is. So today for this episode is the fact that we are moving on to the second world in Pac-Man World 3. And that's what it appears to be is the Banny Wastelands. So at least according to that particular name of that for sake of this world. According to several internets out there. So uh, yeah let's uh, get this thing to it. And as you can see we've uh, immediately uh, come across into ourselves our new power up. Which... This appears to be by the forms of likely, I don't know what exactly what you call this power-up though, because I know it has been, well, I would classify for saying three days since I last touched this game. Clearly it's because of how the fact that, well, obviously that Mighty was actually still working on, uh, well, Mario Party 5, but uh, recently he might be able to take a break from that game for, uh, for about a couple of uh, days or so. Clearly it's because, well... I suppose that I'll let uh, Mega Man be able to mention more details about that. Or oh, actually, couldn't think about it. That I think I'll like to mention about that. That's uh, because obviously that's uh, today's day is of course the uh, today it is is the uh, the fifth of July today. In this case, in 2021, and it looks like about the fact that we've only got about. Uh, 11 days to go until The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD will be releasing for the Nintendo Switch. So, uh, yeah, that might be something worth uh, keeping an eye on for. Especially noticeable that I'm still managed to able to play through Mario Golf Super Rush recently, and especially noticeable with the forms of Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. So just in case I can able to uh, play those two games back to back and wait for a bit until, you know, the next Nintendo Switch I was being, uh, the next Nintendo Switch game I was being hyped about. So, uh, a lot of numerous titles as well, like, you know, Sonic Colors Ultimate, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania, Mario Party Superstars, and WarioWare Get It Together, Metroid Dread, and you name the rest. So, yeah, I don't feel like trying to mention about that uh, repeatedly throughout the majority of those Let's Plays, but uh, at least I'm still pretty darn excited for those games, especially I can play those on the go. Mainly with uh, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania, just because, well... That was actually the first time ever that Nintendo console players can now finally experience the deluxe set of levels uh, physically. So because of that, no need for downloading mods or anything. Although I'm pretty sure that the PC uh, Steam version of Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania could potentially try to able to add in some more additional levels thanks to Community. Which, if that will be the case, then that will be pretty exciting if I do say so for myself. So, yeah, you probably get the idea about that, so... I gotta say, though, the music in this level is just feels a bit too bland for my taste, so, uh... Yeah, about with this power-up as I have obtained, uh, this power-up is named, uh, Ribbon Loop, um, Power Pellet, which basically, that allows you to able to, allows you to able to circle around those enemies, and then if you manage to able to connect one line to the other, for the actual, like, you know, the actual... Um, the ribbon itself, then it actually obviously absorbs, uh, it just makes the enemies get killed by it. Like, if you're trying to form a circle or something, even though it's kind of hard to explain, just because it has been quite a few days since I actually come back to this, as you guys should know. So, um, but I digress. And, uh, that might be kind of helpful, especially noticeable if you really want to take down multitude of enemies, then by all means you can do that. So... Anyway, so let's get into the forms of another discussion for today, and that is something to do with the forms of uh, 
Remember when I mentioned this before about the fact that uh, Mighty the Armadillo will take a break from Mario Party 5 uh, for a while? Until specifically when uh, after the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD will be releasing. That is something to do with the forms of uh, until uh, this upcoming Friday that we might able to actually take uh, some of these uploading schedules off. Mainly because we're about to be going on to a... Well, not on the broad, sadly, but we're actually going to be going somewhere for the sake of, like, staying for three nights as it is due to, like, well, you know what I mean. And uh, because of that, though, that I was pretty excited because, obviously, we're about to be hit on to, or I will be going to the forms of Dorset for, let's just say, three nights. So, uh, yeah, because we still ended up in the forms of the UK, so uh, we figure we're well able to take some time off. So, uh... Even though it's nice to be able to actually take some time off, I suppose, as opposed to likely, like, compared to Maxi Maxi 10, however, though, he just keeps on, like, uploading, you know, multiple videos throughout the singular day. I mean, that's just a bit, well, lacking strategy when it comes to able to letting those views get, uh, increased every time. So, uh, yeah, I was fault to myself about that, so... But, you know, you get the idea about that. So, either way, though, because even then, there won't be any uh, uploading schedules of this on Friday, specifically this Friday. And as I mentioned this before, there won't be any uh, Mario Party videos until specifically, um, you know, the 17th of July, all the way up to, well, let's just say until August, basically. The majority of August, I'm pursuing. Which, spoiler warning, for those of you who really want to know what exactly what it contains... But, uh, either way, though, I'm sure that Mighty will be able to mention more about it until, you know, when it goes back onto Mario Party 5, until, you know, uh, by the, uh, the middle portion of, uh, this month in general. So, well, somewhat roughly, so... But anywho, um... Again, there's not much else I can say apart from the fact that, well, I've already mentioned about quite a number of things, basically, so there's no point for able to mention about certain things again, so, uh... Well, aside from the fact that I might as well still able to actually say this right now, that, um, what if we try to able to actually get ourselves some more games on the PlayStation 4 at some point in the future? Um, generally speaking, when it comes to forms of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 plus 2 remake, uh, that did usually came out in 2020, mind you, uh, excuse me, I thought to myself I might as well get a digital version of the game instead of physically, just because, although, I do need to be able to get the actual external hard drive, because obviously I'm almost running low for those, uh, you know, specifically the actual gigabytes for my PS4, and, um, hopefully we might as well be able to still get Sonic Colors Ultimate, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania, and, especially notable with the new Sonic Rangers game, according to leakers out there for the PS4, so that way I should be all settled when it comes to PS4 stuff, even though that I'm also able to actually get some digital stuff if I get my hard drive first, leaving me with, like, God knows, 550 gigabytes at minimum, or, um... 1 terabytes, even though, depending on pricing, that's the only thing. And, um, also another thing as well, that, um, I don't know if I'm also able to try to get the, uh, the digital version of Batman Arkham Asylum, even though that, um, I'm pretty much almost running low for the sake of, oh, god dang it, stupid camera angles. Come on, don't you dare do this to me. Don't you dare do this to me, camera. Okay, good. Whew. That was actually kind of nerve-wracking for a second, because if the camera will sometimes glitch out for whatever reason, then sometimes you might lose your footing, so, uh... But the good thing it doesn't happen to me in my case, though, for the sake of getting screwed, so, uh... Yeah, I suppose that's alright, so, uh... Anyway, let's, let's grab some more, uh, power pellets, or pack dots, to, like, I have no idea why I say, uh, power pellets for some reason. But the only thing you can only deal with, uh, you know, power pellets is by dealing with, uh, spectral ghosts. So, yeah, you probably get the idea about that. So, I believe in here, this is where we're able to find not only, uh, quite a few, uh, pack dots here and there, but also I get the feeling that there's gonna be another Galaxian somewhere. So, uh, yeah, because I can see it just about over there, but before I, uh, yeah, I'm also able to go in there anyway, so I could able to get this off or done with, so, uh, even though it's, uh, entirely optional if you really want to go for 100% completion, like I was going to be doing, but, uh, it knows what it stands. 
So, um, anyway, um, yeah, something's worth mentioning, though, is the fact that, remember when, um, you know, uh, Mega Man did recently got started for his Let's Play on Klonoa Empire of Dreams since last Thursday? Well, apparently, we actually going on to another Game Boy Advance game for the sake of this whole entire year so far, which I realized about something, because obviously that the Game Boy Advance has now becoming 20 years old now, specifically the original model of the Game Boy Advance, and it was like... Wow, time really does fly, doesn't it? Especially noticeable how the fact that, well, it's doing so well when it comes to marketing and all that stuff. So, either way though, I still really consider that the Game Boy Advance is a must-have system. Well, if I were you, do you highly recommend the, uh, the SP version instead of the forms of the original version? Just because the SP version does have a backlit light system, so at least that's the only good thing about it. So, yeah, just 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 ignore the original version, unless if you want able to modify it to make the actual backlight a little bit more brighter for you. So, uh, yeah, that seems the case, so. And I just realized about something, that I have almost barely hear any music in the background, which... All I can really hear is just, um... Uh, Almost like several winds or so many sound effects for that matter. Oh, and by the way, these pack dots do make a return ever since in uh, Pac-Man World 1 and Pac-Man World 2. So, not much else is different from there. Apart from the fact that you can able to actually reactivate it by simply able to activate some of these uh, pack dot uh, chain uh, switches every once in a while. Which, uh, that'd be situational though, especially noticeable how the fact that, well... If you really want to continue exploring for this whole entire, well, barren world, I must admit though, just because, well, it is, uh, expensive, but, uh, it's just, it felt a bit kind of empty most of the time. I mean, nothing really interesting happens in terms of world themes here and there, it's just, well, you know what I mean, so... Anyway, so let's go ahead and deal with this whole puzzle section right here. So, while we're at it though, we have to deal with, what else? Even more combat. So, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of emphasis on combat in this game. Which, uh, you know, just like in Sonic Boom, that freaking terrible Rise of Lyric game. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's just, I just hate that game so much. But anyway. So yeah, we just have to deal with more combat, and then, you know, just have to deal with that a lot if you really want to continue your progression for this Let's Play. So yeah, believe me, it might get boring after a while, especially noticeable that you have to go for the forms of likely, like, although we're now able to come across into certain enemies that have spikes on their back, and basically you can't uh, butt bounce onto them, because if you butt bounce onto their heads, then you take damage, so yeah, it's best to able to do continuous punches, and basically that's all you really have to do. So, I kinda wish there was actually like, uh, some upgraded movesets in between, but apparently it doesn't, so... Oh well, no big deal, but at least we're gonna have to do with this unfortunately, but it knows where it stands, so... Anyway, and, uh, I might able to try to possibly, if I was gonna able to obtain, uh, the PlayStation Vita version of, uh, Jumpstar Super, Jumpstar, uh, Victory vs. Plus, because for I've heard that the PS Vita version was actually is the best version of the game, although, mind you, I was expecting to get the PS4 version between the two, but it's kind of a tough choice for me, though, at, at the moment, because obviously I'm only focusing on well, the next three PlayStation 4 games I'll be getting in the future, so either way though, well, we'll just gotta wait and find out, especially noticeable how the fact that since we're still on the halfway point in 2021, which, so far, as far as passing through the first half of this year so far, uh, is alright. I mean, it's not the best, uh, halfway point in terms of the actual year so far. I mean, mind you, that there's still some, uh, you know, bullcrap moments, mainly with the forms of, you know, some stupid... Oh, l let's just not mention about that right now, just because obviously this is actually uh, a different day to discuss, and also because, well, there's not much else to it, I'm afraid. So, uh, in fact, I almost felt a bit slightly sick today, but um, hopefully I might as felt a bit slightly better once I finished this recording session, so either way though, let's just go ahead and, uh, whoa! Goodness gracious, Referral, you're almost gonna fluke me off again. But anyway, let's just go ahead and, uh, uh, continue on for this point right here, and, uh, 
I do definitely know there might be something up there, but uh, I do get the feeling that we do need to activate something, so, uh... But again, it kind of feels like a semi-blind playthrough on this, I'm afraid, so, uh... Yeah, get used to it with all the forms of a lot of, like, uh, semi-blind uh, run-throughs like this, especially that is almost more accurately my first time playing the, the game. So, yeah, I'm also able to try and get used to it, so... Is there any music in the background? Oh my gosh, there was literally no music in this place. I mean, we did have some bit of music in uh, the first section, but... Apparently we don't hear any music in this section either. And I was like, what? I have no words to say, because uh... It just felt kind of awkward though, especially when you're able to try to hear like... Nothing for the actual atmosphere like this, and it's just... It just feels out of place, I'm telling you. It just feels very out of place. Indeed. Oh boy. So anyways, let's just go ahead and grab the collectible card. And... Grab some more pack dots, and we need to grab the watermelon, so just in case we can able to just... Well, you know, try to able to actually activate something from there. So, I get the feeling that... I'm not exactly sure where I'm supposed to go. Even though it's kind of a shame that we can't grab that ledge over there, unlike, you know, some segments in Pac-Man World 2. So, yeah, I was going to do is the hard way then, aren't we? Ah, I think that's what we're supposed to do? Because obviously that we... I haven't exactly uh, activated the... Uh, or haven't touched the... Uh, the pack dots uh, chain, so yeah, I must admit that I felt incredibly blind for that, so... Anyway, let's go ahead and just use the rev roll onto that panel, and able to actually just get those little uh, pillars to able to go down, and potentially speaking, that way we can able to obtain the green crystal and the blue crystal. Oh, what is that reminds me of something? Ah, uh, yes, it's the actual Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. Collectible kind of stuff. Oh, jeez. But, um, at the very least, that, uh, it doesn't feel that much glitchy, I think. So, yeah, let's just save the game, so just in case I don't, uh, able to actually get screwed from that point. So, uh, at least thankfully we can able to save our progress from there. Even though it's kind of a shame that it doesn't feature, like, um, an older saving system. So, yeah, it... Kind of feels like a, well, a similar vibe as in the new forms of Sonic 06, uh, the lack of auto-saving thing, so, uh, yeah, that's as far as I can think about it, so, yeah, anyway, and I do apologize with the actual gameplay for it, it feels a bit, kind of feels a bit drag on at points, because I just have no idea what the heck am I supposed to do, like, obviously, it doesn't tell you what you're supposed to do, uh, First things first, though, and also it's bad enough that I don't really think that this game doesn't have a, doesn't have a map function, which is, well, kind of sad, honestly, because I I could imagine if first time players who ever experienced this game, and as a result, uh, they might well be able to get confused and lost, of absolutely have no idea what they're about to go, and it's just it feels like it kind of feels like a claustrophobic of. Confusion navigation, so that's what I find anyway. So, but anyway, let's just go ahead and uh, well, uh, I still need able to obtain the blue crystal, so uh, hopefully, I need to backtrack for a bit. So, yeah, that, that could be like something else, that could be really something else. Hey. But at the very least, that uh, once I've done with this, though, then we can probably head back onto Klonoa Empire of Dreams um, until tomorrow, anyway, because that particular game does have music in every single level, and at least in Klonoa's music soundtrack-wise, it's pretty amazing and cheerful, but nothing compared to this, though, because... Well, again, as I mentioned this before, well, there aren't any music in the background? Okay, what the hell just happened right there? I have no idea why that I'm just speechless right now. 
But, um, yeah, alright, um, this is definitely a prequel to Sonic Boom, where you were able to actually get a random, uh, drop shadow, and then I'm pretty sure that Pac-Man somehow disappears or fluke up, but I have no words to say just because, well, I'm just still speechless, so... Anyway, now we got the blue crystal, so now we need to, like, I think we need to take a ride on that particular, uh, pack dodge, uh, chain again on, uh, the green, uh, switch to activate, so, yeah, I could pretty much guarantee by that, so hopefully I'm as well able to do that. Oh, jeez. I know this episode is kind of boring, but, uh, just because of, again, no music in the background, so... I have no idea why it's something to do with the actual, like, no music glitch, or is it just the game itself? But, I have no much to say, so... Okay, so we've already, uh, been through here, so I just need to be able to find, um, the green, uh, switch, which, uh... Again, I just wish there was actually a map feature, because otherwise, if it does have a map feature, then I should be able to keep a track with the progress, but... At least unlike in Pac-Man World 1 and Pac-Man World 2, I can able to actually just to go and uh, see what's up ahead. Well, at least despite those two games are quite linear, but at the very least I can able to enjoy myself exploring. But nothing like this though, especially noticeable you have to do with a lot of like, well, some chores most of your time, so... But anyway, now we're able to activate that, and hopefully it should lead us to... Um, I won't classify for saying that one of those, um, well, the referral panel that we can able to interact with, so, uh, we'll, uh, Pac-Man, can you stand on here? Thank you. And hopefully, in addition to able to obtain a strawberry right there, right next to me, but also we can able to obtain this particular agent tablet right there, and that way we can able to actually open up the actual door gate, and eventually we'll hit probably... Um, I will suffice to say that I think we've almost done with this world, thankfully, so, uh, but don't expect things to be, like, dragged on every now and then, but, again, I have no words to say, so. Anyway, so let's go ahead and, uh, insert this here, and hopefully we can continue exploring in the actual, uh, the actual ruins, as you can see on that, uh, little, um, capture recording, so. And of course, some more enemies to deal with, so either way though, to my surprise, that it will actually be likely something to notice that. But anyway, um, oh yeah, and another thing is worth noting for this point as well, that, uh, I believe, uh, fundamentally speaking, is the fact that until, it, when it gets to a point until next week, that, um, that Monsters University, at least in the UK, release on the big screen, uh, that film will become 8 years old in the UK, and then, compared to the American release, well, it obviously, it already did happen since, uh, the 21st of June, which I don't suppose I actually mentioned about it, um, ever since in Warrior Lands 2 Let's Play, so, yeah, you probably get the idea about that, so, but at least I'm quite surprised that film is now, um, 8 years old now, so, even then, though, why is time flies? I have no idea, but it wasn't until in 2023, then it will be become a decade old. And unfortunately though, is that you remember that dreaded film called Cars 2? Well, I'm afraid that film will also get a 10th anniversary treatment, so... Yeah, I'm not too surprised about that. Especially, you know, that film is easily the weakest films of the Pixar films, so... But you know, you get the idea, so either way though, let's move on to the next section. Orson. I'd claim to be pleased to see you, but you messed up my party and threw me into a trash pit where lots of things with big pointy teeth tried to turn me into lunch. This is serious, Pac-Man. Erwin is so hungry for power that he's siphoning energy from the spectral realm. So what can I do? For starters, Inky, Blinky, Pinky, and Clyde have disappeared. I fear the worst. I want you to go to the spectral realm and check things out. A trip to a doomed place that's full of ghosts and spectral monsters. Hey, count me in. Good. But before that, I want you to help me calibrate Talkman. Talkman? You have a new Talkman? A new big giant robot Talkman? More than a normal giant robot Pac-Man. 
15 tons of the most state-of-the-art bad guy smooshing technology ever balanced on legs. Cool. Just try not to break this one, huh? And by all means, the next section is that this will actually be the last section we're going to be dealing with. And this is nothing like Tarkman, by the way, because I remember so much of the first game that he was like, pretty menacing and, in and intimidating for his voice, but... What the heck is happening to Tarkman? But anyways, here we go with this last section. Basically, we can take control of the forms of Tarkman since the first game, despite the fact that it looks nothing like the original game. At least that's to me anyway. So because of that though, all you really have to do is just constant, uh, you know, just smashing some uh, target enemies and that's pretty much about it. So nothing special and it does have a time limit to able that up for the challenge, but honestly, it just feels very underwhelming to me. And because of that though, yeah, these segments are kind of boring, but uh, that's probably just me anyway, mainly it's because, well... I just have no words of how these sections plays out, especially that, you know, Tarkman looks nothing like the original game, as I said this before, and it's just, ugh. Actually, couldn't think about it. Uh, let me know in the comments below for the question of the day. Uh, what do you guys think about the forms of Cars 2 after 10 years of release since 2011? Does it still sucks, or does it get a little bit of a better of a second chance deserves, or is it terrible still? Because for me, it's pretty rubbish and crap. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely is one of the worst Pixar films ever, so it's literally the worst. Like, literally, who thought that putting Major as the main character, the main focus, is concerned? But, I just wish if, uh, Light Me McQueen can able to actually do all this racing action again, but no, they just put up with the forms of spy flicks that we've already seen, like, cliches and all that stuff, and it's just... It's not fun. <laughs> it's literally not that fun either. So, anyway. And that was it? Huh? Okay. So, that was pretty much about it for the second world. So, yeah. I'm just gonna able to type my name here quickly. So, yeah. I can't even believe I managed to beat this for about 27 or so minutes. But, still, depending on the forms of exploration. So, yeah. Let's just, uh save here so that way we can able to keep our track with our progress and well we can probably continue as well so we'll just uh save my game here even though it's kind of a shame it doesn't show you the actual percentage meter thing unlike the first game and the second game but oh well what can you do so anyways i believe we got ourselves a cinematic cutscene to watch so um yeah two ghosts, the spectral realm is almost empty. It's ready for the siphons to begin. Ah, yes, well, thanks. It's been real. Off you go. What about the new problem? The new yellow problem? If you're talking about Pac-Man, our paths have already crossed. The yellow power? Too much to solve! We're all doomed, I tell you! Doomed! I don't want to be doomed! I just want to go home. Anyway, Nefarious Scheme 57 is a big fat go. Nothing can stop me now. <laughs> you say something about two other ghosts. <laughs> They'll be dealt with. And if Pac-Man tries to interfere, he shall rue the day he ever tried to interfere. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Cool. I'm warning you two. 
And unfortunately though, much like Pac-Man World 2, they just got the wrong names between, you know, Blinky and Clyde again, so... Oh well. Whoa, um, wow. Uh, what is this place, Orson? It's... weird. If my calculations are correct, and they are, you're in the spectral realm just as planned. Hmm. So this is where all you ghosts come from. Not very homely, is it? Remind me what I'm doing here. I've lost contact with my friends, Pac-Man. I need you to track them down. Pinky, Blinky, Pinky, and Clyde. I'm sure you remember. Yeah, first they chase me, then I chase them, then they chase me. Tracking them down will be just like old times. I'm on it. And as far as to say, I think I should probably get out the endings off at this point right here. So join me next time on Let's Play Pac-Man World 3. It's that we're going to be exploring for the third world in the game known as the Spectral Cliffs. So I'll see you guys until on the next day. Later, fellas.